He was a pirate and he was trying to overthrow the captain in a mutiny and then and then they cut off his legs and Welcome back to the channel everybody! Alright, it's been a while and we are in a brand new office. If you don't recognize it, that's okay, because I just got here myself. There's only a couple things to remember on this channel. We are trying to turn that plaque gold and everybody here is second to none. My name is Wes Barker and I am a magician but I'm also interested in anything mysterious. So today I have a story for you. A Canadian story. It's over 100 years old now, but it is incredibly weird. About the mystery man of St. Mary's Bay, Nova Scotia, Canada. His name was Jerome. The unidentified legless man named Jerome. September 8th, 1963, 158 years ago, who, who, who's counting? A man was discovered on the beach of St. Mary's Bay, Nova Scotia, and this man could not speak, and he had no legs. He was amputated above the knee. Having both legs amputated back in the mid-1800s, uh, well, that's pretty unusual. So needless to say, people were coming from far and wide to meet this mysterious man. He couldn't or didn't speak, so he never said where he came from. He uttered a couple noises that sounded like Jerome, so they started calling him Jerome, but we don't really know if that was his true name. He never said anything about his life story, whether he couldn't or wouldn't. That's where people's imagination ran wild. All of a sudden you have this mystery man washed up on the shore. He's clearly in his 30s-ish, and he's seemingly in good health, except he can't speak and he has no legs. Some people speculated that he about pirates, that he was a pirate and he was trying to overthrow the captain in a mutiny and then and then they cut off his legs and threw him overboard. And other people said that he was an Italian that was an heir to a fortune and someone got rid of him to make way for one of the other heirs for the inheritance or the he was a criminal and this was his punishment some people said that he could speak but he just refused not to other people said he couldn't speak i mean it, it's wild he lives in nova scotia until 1912 so for 50 years he's living in nova scotia he doesn't seem to understand english french latin italian or spanish he tended to growl like a dog or an animal if people got too near him Jerome was passed around from family to family to look after him in Nova Scotia, and the government was, was chipping in for his needs for whatever family was taking him in. By the time Jerome died in April of 1912, the legend of Jerome had only just begun. There was even less to know about him, and it was all stories and hearsay and myth. I mean, we have all the, all the information in the world at our fingertips, and we still have rumors spread that are totally inaccurate all the time. You can imagine back in 1912 how that would go. There were still news clippings and newspaper articles and books and eventually a Canadian movie written about him. Like it is just insane what people thought. Now we have theories which I can tell you now or you can just imagine, fantasize, hypothesize, intellectualize and uh, imaginize what a legless mute is doing in Nova Scotia in 1863. Uh, and you can just let your imagination run wild. You can just you can just pontificate on whatever you think it might have been. You can believe the pirates or or the uh, the overthrown heir or the he was a criminal and this was his punishment and something across the and blah blah blah. You, whatever you want. Or after many hours of me reading up on this and being fascinated by this, I think I got to the bottom of it. I have the most plausible story for you. And it isn't any less weird, but it kind of makes sense. Rewind. Before he's found in Nova Scotia, there's an Italian immigrant who got work as a lumberjack in New Brunswick, right across the Bay of Fundy. So on the other side of this bay is St. Mary's Bay, Nova Scotia. Okay? Those of you bad at Canadian geography, just try and stay with me. Now this Italian immigrant who doesn't speak much English gets lost and injured in the woods while he's doing his job. He suffered frostbite and injuries to his leg, as long as some brain trauma. And by the time they found him, he was severely frostbitten and injured. They took him to the local parish in Chipman, New Brunswick, and that's where he had to have his legs amputated. Now they started calling this man Gamby. Why they call him Gamby? Well, he couldn't speak because of his brain injury, uh, but he did utter a few words. Because he was Italian, they think that maybe when he woke up from his surgery, he was saying Gamba, Gamba, which is Italian for leg. Gamba. Sorry if I'm butchering that. But that's what they thought he was saying, Gamby, and they gave him the name Gamby because it's the only thing he was saying over and over again. So now they have this mostly mute, brain injured, legless man named Gamby. Now this is fairly well documented. There's doctor's bills, there's petitions to the government asking for funds to help care for this man for whichever family takes him in because, well, I mean, he's legless and he can't speak. He can't work. 
He's going to just need to be cared for. And this goes on for a couple years until the community of New Brunswick gets kind of sick of their tax money going towards helping this guy. So rumor has it they hired a boat captain to take Gamby in the middle of the night across the Bay of Fundy and drop him off in the French part of Nova Scotia just so he could just be Nova Scotia's problem now. Now this is where it gets kind of cool because the amputated Italian immigrant, Gamby, disappears from the New Brunswick records roughly the same time that Jerome shows up in Nova Scotia. Now we can't be 100% sure that Jerome is Gamby, but the year is 1863 and how many legless muted people are there around there, especially how rare it would have been to survive that surgery. Especially amputated above the knee with the same method, the flat method. Especially with the same difficulties communicating. I mean, it kind of adds up. So if you ask me, Gamby is Jerome. It's a little bit less of a fun story to imagine. It's not as cool as uh, Fortunes of Gold and Pirate Mutinies, but it has some certain logic to it that kind of holds up. It really lines up super well. And I mean, nowadays it's so much easier to track person from point A to point B. I mean, we can just, there's so many ways of, uh, uh, you know, paper trails and electronic data and, and, and GPS. And I mean, it's, it's, it's impossible just to wash up somewhere as a mystery person these days. But back then, it could have happened so easy. If you show up somewhere and you can't tell anybody who you are, where you're from, all they can do is speculate. You don't have any papers, nothing. You're just a guy and you can't articulate, write down anything uh, about who you are or where you're from, what are they to do? So there is no surprise in my heart about why it was so crazily speculated. It would have been fun back then to think that someone as unusual as this would have had some fantastical story about how he came to be. You know, if you go to St. Mary's Bay, there are still pubs and little plaques and, and stories and, and myth and legend and lore, and it's all, it's all really fun because it's you know well over 100 years ago now, so uh, it, it's just a, a neat tale of, of mystery and intrigue. But if you dive right in, there seems to be a logical connection. I mean, if not, what happened to Gamby? And where the hell did Jerome come from? If those aren't the same people, I got a lot more questions. Anyways, thanks for joining me. I hope you're liking these stories. I'm not trying to do a Canadian mysteries channel or anything, but when I find something interesting, I kind of want to talk about it. Hope you guys are enjoying it. I will see you next week. Let's do this every week. Let's do a video every week and let's not miss any weeks. We got the new office all set up. Join me, won't you? Please subscribe and uh, let's make this one into one of those gold ones if we can. Thanks a lot. Take care, everybody. See you on the next one. Bye. I don't know how to leave. I don't know how to exit. I haven't figured out this place. I need a curtain, maybe. I have a curtain swinging. Like that curtain. <laughs> <laughs>